So for the longest time, I was on a web browser journey of sorts. If you watched my channel for a fairly long time, you'll know that I was switching back and forth between browsers almost as often as I was switching back and forth between Linux distributions. I was a browser hopper, if you will. I tried Firefox and went back and forth between various Chromium things, and I tried Vivaldi and Edge for a little while because apparently there was a point there where I just completely lost my sanity. But I've tried almost all the browsers. I've wanted to use you know, cute browser for a while in the past, but had problems because it didn't have good ad blocking. And, you know, I've tried all of them and eventually that got kind of old and I settled down on Firefox for the longest time. And then I moved on to Vivaldi. Now I have a, an entire video on why I use Vivaldi as my main browser. And yes, I know it's proprietary and it's garbage and all that stuff. I understand if that's your point of view and that's per a perfectly fine, po fine point of view to have, but I like Vivaldi for the reasons I stated in that video. But Firefox is always there in the background, you know, causing me a little bit of guilt because it is open source and I feel like I should be, you know, supporting open source projects when I can. But of course there are features in Vivaldi that just really aren't in Firefox or at least aren't easily replicated in Firefox. So I've been kind of stuck on Vivaldi, although I don't call it stuck because I do enjoy it, but whatever. That's beside the point. One of the things that I was surprised about though is when someone on Discord pinged me about a brand new browser that I've never heard of before that emulates a lot of the stuff that Vivaldi does, but is based on Firefox instead of Chromium. And the browser that I'm talking about, that I was told about, is called Florp. Now, let's just get this out of the way. Florp, F-L-O-O-R-P, is the worst name for a browser that I've ever heard of. So if you're the developer of Florp, I'm sorry, bro, but your name is crap. It's really bad. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry, you need to find a new, a new name. Uh, but the browser itself is actually really, really good. Now, is it going to get me to change away from Vivaldi? Eh, I don't think so. It is still missing, a, you know, the main feature and the main reason why I use Vivaldi, but it's pretty close. It's pretty, pretty close. If they were to add tab groups and workspaces to Florp, you'd have me switching today. That's how good it is. So let's talk about Florp. I'm going to scowl every time I say the name, <laughs> I promise you. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It would really help the channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at Florp. So this here is Florp. And if you're saying, well, that kind of looks like Firefox. Well, it is Firefox, just with a lot of extra stuff on top of it. Now, when a company or a developer or whatever forks Firefox then adds things to it. Traditionally, the way they do so is with extensions. So basically, they just give you Firefox with some extensions. That's the way, um, that's mostly the way like Mulved Browser does it. It's mostly the way things like LibreWolf do it. You know, they have, obviously they do add some stuff to Firefox, but a lot of the stuff that's there that they tout as features come to you in the way of extensions. Florp doesn't actually do it that way. As you can see, there are no actual extensions installed in Florp. Now, it's a little bit deceiving because it does appear that they actually integrate some extensions into the browser. They just do so without actually installing the extensions themselves. They integrate them fully into the experience, which is one way to do it. I'm not sure if I'm happy that they're there. You know, like I can't actually, you know, pull them out if I don't want them. Um, but I can also see the benefits of doing it that way. But I also see a lot of downsides, like if the extension gets updated, but the developers of Florp don't update it, you know, they can there can be some messiness there in the future. And there are a few examples of them actually doing this, and we'll talk about those as we go along. But that seems to be the way they handle extensions right up front. And that's how they've added features is from some extensions and also some things that they've done on their own. So let's talk about some of those features. What actually makes Florp special besides the crazy and wacky name well there are several things really so first the design of it so if you, we go to the settings the first thing i did not record the initial setup but you can get to all the initial setup stuff here right in the settings they have different versions of the firefox ui so you can change to the proton ui which looks something like this this is the photon ui they have the Flurial UI, which is the, this, this is depreciated. They have the GNOME theme, which is depreciated, which looks like that. And you can just switch for these through these, you know, hot swappable. They like just switch right away. A lot of times when 
they use different actual design themes that are, looks like they're using CSS to do these things, you have to relaunch the browser in order to get to that direction. And you don't have to do that here, which is nice. You can also change the bar, the tab bar style. So you can change it. It's horizontal by default, so it looks like this. You can change it to the multi-row tab bar, which looks like this. Or, my favorite, you can change to a vertical tab bar just like that and it looks like this and it works really well now you can see like here's your first example of them using an extension built right into the web browser so they have they're doing this here by using tree style tab which is an, a very popular extension to get vertical tabs they've built it right into florp one of the things that's even more interesting about this is that they do ask you to actually install the extension so that you get more options. So you can then have the tree style tab options. You just go to the add on section of Mozilla. You can install that and then it will give you the options to actually customize the parts of Florp that came from the extension. Now you as far as I can tell, you can't take those parts out, but you could then uninstall the extension. So earlier when I said you couldn't uninstall it, if you install the extra part, you can obviously disable that later on. Now there are other settings that they've built in depending on which tab bar you're using. So you can have it optimized for a vertical bar if you're using a vertical bar. If you're not using it, it has other options for things like hiding the tabs on a horizontal bar. So if you don't want the tabs to appear at all, you can display the top tab bar underneath the toolbar. You can display the tab bar at the bottom of the window. So if you wanted to, if we wanted to go to back up here to the horizontal top bar, we could change it so that the, the tab bar is at the bottom, which is something that you can't do in Firefox without using user Chrome. So the reason why I say that this is very close to what Vivaldi does is Vivaldi does kind of the exact same thing. It allows you to change where the tab bar is, where the, the address bar is, where the sidebar is, all that stuff can be changed hot swappable right inside of the Vivaldi settings. And here with Florp, you can do that on a Firefox based browser as well, which is really, really sweet, but it's not just the UI that they've changed. So there are several other things as well. So if I have two tabs here, I can actually select both of them and then right click hit fixed and split view and show in left and right. And I can actually tile tabs just like I can in Vivaldi. Now, regular Firefox, if we switch to regular Firefox, I can select the same, same two tabs, right click, and there's no option for that. Those aren't options that you have. And so that's something else that they've built in. This is back to Florp, and this is really cool. You can also, you, the one thing you can't do is it's not quite as flexible as Vivaldi, is that you can't change the size. So in Vivaldi, you can hover here in the middle and actually drag one to the side, so one's smaller than the other. Maybe that's something that they can add late in a later version, but the fact that this feature is here is really, really cool. So you can get out of the, the tile or fixed split view just by going here and hitting close split tab, and it goes back to normal. If we do another right click here, you can also see some of the other things that they've enabled and added to their context menu. So they have this option here, keep tab awake. So if you want your tab to stay awake and not hibernate, you can select this. Also, by default, Firefox, if we go back to Firefox here, we can, we can see that containers aren't actually enabled by default. You have to have a extension in order to do that. Now, Firefox containers are one of the most wonderful features Firefox actually has, and they are kind of built in. You just have to ha enable them in order to do so. So the fact that Thorpe has them enabled out of the box, so you can right click and move to a container tab so that they can be categorized, or you can open up a new tab in a container. So if you go here, just do, you know, personal or whatever, and it opens up a container in personal and it works really really well containers are a fantastic feature that firefox has and florp has them enabled out of the box that's really really cool now in terms of tabs one of the things that it's missing and this is a big big downside for me is tab groups tab groups aren't here i really wish that they were because that would make it just one step closer to being able to take over vivaldi for me but it's just not here and, and like i said they could find themselves like simple tab groups and integrate that in if they could possibly do that that'd be like that'd push it over the top for me i could even see myself getting rid of workspaces on vivaldi just being happy without them if i could have tab groups in simple tab groups here built in now obviously i could just install that extension if i wanted to that could bring us close but i'd like to have it built in just because the rest of the stuff is built in right so that part that feature there is still missing now there are a few other 
features that I'm not going to cover here in depth. There is a sidebar so you can do th simple things like a web panel like you can do in Fire in uh, Vivaldi so you can actually see that it has web panels as well so this is like Google Translate or whatever and you could add Mastodon like I have in Vivaldi or ESPN like I've done in Vivaldi and add them just here in the in the sidebar you have also have access to your downloads your history and your your bookmarks right here in the in the sidebar now another thing that is missing here when it comes to this is the ability to collapse this or move or move it around i'm not sure if you can move it around let me see you can move it to the right or left if you want to but it doesn't look like you can actually hide it away like collapse it beyond what this is but you can change the width of it which is actually kind of cool it's not something that you can usually do in these kind of things you can just make it actually smaller if you want and you can also change where it gets the the little favicons as well if you wanted to do that so that's really interesting as well i, I wish you could collapse it so if you didn't want to use that you don't didn't have to uh, you can actually change it so not to not show it at all but on vivaldi on vivaldi there's actually a, i don't know if you guys will be able to see this but there's a little arrow over here if i wanted to hide it completely i can get that and then I can bring it back. And then, you know, this is what a side panel actually looks like in Vivaldi. And it kind of works exactly the same way that you can see where they've gotten the inspiration. It's just not quite as fully featured. Now, they've also added many different settings into the settings application as well. I'm not going to go through all of them because it just take too long. But they've added a download manager so that you can see the download managers over here. You can change how that operates and how it looks. You can change do a lot of the same things you can do inside of firefox obviously most of the firefox stuff is still here as well you can customize most of your keyboard shortcuts as well you can change what the home stuff is most of the stuff here is directly from firefox but they've added a few things here or there and in terms of sync basically what they've done is they've integrated mozilla sync so they just use the regular firefox syncing capability but they do have something called florp view now as far as I can tell, Florp View is just a syncing mechanism for getting your tabs from Florp to Firefox. So they've integrated with the Mozilla, your Mozilla account to get your tabs from your one device to another. So you can do that. I haven't tested this out, so I don't know how well it works or what's actually different about it in terms of just using micro, or Mozilla Sync. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But... This is something that they've built in and it's another feature that they have. So there's that. Now, a, a couple things that I've just noticed as I've been using this for the last hour or so is that they have the extensions menu here in two different places. So uh, I don't really care for that. It's kind of redundant. Uh, you could obviously get rid of this, I believe. Uh, I'm not going to let you get rid of that, but I wonder if you can get rid of this one. Probably in the settings. If we can go to the settings back here to the browser menu and go to... Oh, the extensions part isn't here, actually. <laughs> okay, so you can't actually get rid of the, the second one either. That's disappointing, but it's in both places. It doesn't actually hurt anything, but the fact that they're both there basically at this in the same spot is kind of annoying. Uh, in terms of actual browser speed, now you got to remember that browser speed tests are highly dependent on the hardware. So Florp in this particular browser test on my particular hardware received a 206 uh, test per minute, run per minute speed score. Firefox itself, if we go to Firefox, I've run this also in Firefox on the same, it got 186. So if you want to take that as scientific, you can. Uh, they're, apparently, Florp is a little bit faster. I'm not sure if you would run this test over and over again, if that you know would hold up or if, you, if it would change as you opened up more tabs in one or the other. I don't know about, about any of that. I've only run it the one time, so take that as you will. So this is Florp. And like I said, there are tons of features here that I haven't actually covered, and I will link to their GitHub and their website down below. I don't know anything about the developers of this, this particular project. So just I'm going to put that right out there for you guys to know all about. You can do your own research on, on who the developers of this are. It has been around for a little while, so it's not like a brand spanking new project. But you just still keep an eye on, you know, when you're trying a fork of something by a, a certain developer that's not the main developer, you should still understand that you're using it from someone you're probably not aware of. But it is free and open source, so you can go through the source code if you are interested in doing so. You can see all of the commits and stuff like that if you want to, just to make sure that nothing is being pulled over your eyes. So it's all right here for you if you want to. So that is Florp. And like I said at the beginning... 
it is very, very close to Vivaldi. I mean, they've done a really, really good job of integrating stuff that they found or coded themselves in various ways to imitate what Vivaldi does. It's close. It's not quite there. Not quite there. There are some features like the collapsible sidebar that I'd like to see, but really the big one is workspaces and tab groups. That's still the big feature for me in Vivaldi, and until that's in a Firefox clone, I'll be sticking with Vivaldi. Now, integrating simple tab groups would get you 90% of the way there. That's basically, it's almost workspaces. It's not quite tab stacks, which Vivaldi has, but they have the multi-line tabs in Florp, so they could theoretically get there if they wanted to. It's very, very close, right? Like, it's very, very close. So I'm very impressed with Florp such as it is. I don't know how stable it is. I didn't use it long enough to actually be able to, to talk about how stable it is or how often it's updated or any of that stuff. So if you try this, just keep, you know, keep your head on the swivel and make sure you know what's what's what and all that stuff. So uh, that is Florp. If you have thoughts on this browser, you can leave those in the comment section below. It's a very, very early first look at this browser, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps the channel. You can also follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me at Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. And if you want to help support the channel, you can head on over to the merch store, which is at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find t-shirts and hats and mugs and desk mats and all sorts of stuff all that stuff goes directly to help the channel so thanks to everybody who, who has done that and will do that in the future i really do appreciate that shop at the links cast at arcs thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube because you're all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it i like i said just thank you so very very much for your support i truly you guys are awesome thanks everybody for watching everybody 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 Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.